Sir, you know, there's a lot of people who are prognosticating on the macroeconomic outlook. And the reality is I have no crystal ball more than anyone else. But I can tell you what we're seeing and then how we're thinking about it. Sure. The simple fact of the matter is we're seeing continued strong consumer demand for our products and our brands, for Nike, Jordan, and, and Converse. We saw that in Q2, and we continue to see that. And so we're just focusing on we have a muted outlook going forward. We're prepared for anything, but our focus is to make sure that we get stronger through this period, regardless of how the inflation and economy play out. And that's what that's what strong companies do. So you're saying you still have pricing power in this environment, basically? I'm saying we still have deep consumer connections and that connect consumers are prioritizing Nike, Jordan and Converse in their purchases. And that's that's what we've been focused on continuing to do with a connection with the consumer, and that's what we'll continue to do regardless of the economic outlook. What about China? Since, since China has begun to reopen, what have you seen from consumers there? Well, as you saw, after two years of disruption, we returned to growth in China in Q2. And for your viewers, our Q2 ended November 30th of last year. So we saw 6% in currency-adjusted growth. And we have invested heavily in China, even through the disruption over the last couple of years. And we saw fruits of those investments. So, for instance, we invested in building hyper-local product, where we would take an iconic franchise like Air Force One or Dunk, mm -hmm. and we localize it so it's relevant for the Chinese consumer. And the Chinese consumer really responded to that and is responding to that. Our storytelling and our brand is more locally contextually done right now. So whether mm -hmm. it's live streaming or on Tmall and on the platforms, they're connecting again with Chinese consumers. And we saw that in how the consumer's responding. So we're still the number one cool and favorite brand in Shanghai and in Beijing. We're really focused on the Gen Z consumer in China. We saw very good response from the Gen Z consumer who wants the most innovative products and wants brands that are globally relevant. And so that's what we focused on. We saw a good response in Q2, and we have the same focus and outlook going forward. So since then, but just in the past few weeks or so, have you seen the Chinese consumer really ramp up the spending since they've opened up the economy? Well, there's been disruption in China. There's, there's, as you know, there's been phases of disruption. For instance, at the end of Q2, when there was a zero COVID policy, we had 1,500 stores closed. Now with the transition toward the, uh, an evolved COVID uh, policy, mm -hmm. uh, our stores are open, but obviously consumers and our teams are working through as COVID works its way through that, that society and that economy. And we factored in some disruption in our outlook, but we view that as, as transitory. We still believe in the fundamentals of China. We still believe it's a strong market. We're confident it's a strong market, and we're confident in our position. What about inventories, John? Nike got slammed, as so many companies did, by the supply chain issues and the ports congestion. And, and I know you're working through that, but they're still bloated. We saw some progress last quarter. When do you think about return to normalization for industry uh, inventory levels? Yeah, it's, well, as you said, our inventories kind of peaked in, at the end of Q1. And just we, like many others, faced a sort of bulge in inventory. And so our focus has really been twofold, Sarah, since then. One is to stay ruthlessly focused on our core iconic franchises, our innovative products, where we still experience full price realization. And we saw that through Q2. So the consumer is still paying list price for the Nike products that they know and love. In the areas where we have excess inventory, which is primarily apparel in North America, we are working through it. We're discounting and working through it. Our units of inventory were significantly lower at the end of Q2 than they were at the end of Q1. They'll be lower at the end of Q3. And our goal is to be back to normalized inventory levels by the end of our fiscal year, which is May 31st, as you know.